Hi, my name is Regina, and I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Cambridge. Today I'll be talking about Pios Code, a Python package that I developed for solving ordinary differential equations with highly oscillatory solutions efficiently. First, let me summarize what kind of problems Pios Code can solve, and then I'll briefly go through the algorithm underlying the package. Ordinary differential equations can have oscillatory solutions for many reasons. This can be due to an oscillatory forcing term or an oscillatory coefficient multiplying one of the terms in the equation. But even in the absence of a forcing term, and if the terms in the equation change slowly, if the equation takes this form, which is the form of a harmonic oscillator, but with a time-dependent frequency and damping term, if the frequency is large enough, the solution will oscillate rapidly. Pius code was designed to deal with this third type of equation, so one-dimensional ordinary differential equations that take this specific form with the frequency and potential damping terms varying slowly for at least part of the integration range. And by that I mean them varying on a time scale that is much larger than the time scale on which the solution varies. But why is it necessary to add yet another numerical solver to our toolbox? The set of differential equations that Pius code can be applied to may also seem narrow, but I can assure you that these problems are extremely common in physics. They pop up in problems to do with pendula, in suspension systems, but also fields like electrical circuitry and celestial and quantum mechanics. Apart from their abundance, what makes these equations stand out is that conventional methods that you may find in scipy.integrate, MATLAB, Mathematica, and so on, struggle to solve them. Let me demonstrate this um, on a simple example. This equation x double dot plus tx equals zero is the air equation, and it has an analytic solution. It is of the form of a harmonic oscillator whose frequency is square root of time, which increases over time. So in the first cell, I'm just defining the equation. And in the second cell, I'm going to time how long scipy.integrate.solve IVP takes to solve it, and also output the numerical solution at the end of the integration range and compare it to the analytic solution. So that took somewhat of a noticeable time to solve. Uh, not only that, but scipy.integrate didn't seem to get the solution right within the relative tolerance that I set, which was one part in a thousand. But why did this happen? The answer lies with the method that scipy.integrate.solveivp defaults to, which is uh, a fourth, fifth order Runge-Kutta method. Runge-Kutta is great for exploratory analysis, so when you don't know the global behavior of the solution. It is also great for non-stiff equations or for solutions that don't oscillate too much, but it will struggle with the air equation simply because it is being applied outside of its range of validity here, with the air equation taking the form of an oscillator whose frequency is increasing with time. And this is a general property among conventional methods that I mentioned they generally struggle to trace the oscillations. This, however, doesn't make any of these methods any less amazing. And in fact, Runge-Kutta plays a crucial role in the algorithm underlying Pioscope. So let's take a look at how it works and why it failed. So first we want to phrase the problem like this. x dot equals f of x, where x is a vector and f is a vector valued function. For simplicity, I'll work with x being a scalar, but in general, it can be a vector. Let's say we have the solution x and its derivative at t equals ti, and we want to get the solution at a later time, ti plus h, h being the step size of the algorithm. Runge-Kutta methods do this by Taylor expanding. So they Taylor expand the solution x of t around t equals ti, and then the first term will be just our solution at ti. The second term will be proportional to the right-hand side of the equation. But then the later terms will be proportional to derivatives of f, which we don't have access to. Uh, Runge-Kutta methods go around this problem by replacing derivatives of f with 
evaluations of F at grid points that lie between Ti and Ti plus H. And if one chooses these grid points and the constants Bj correctly, then this expression, when Taylor expanded around T equals Ti, will match the Taylor expansion of the solution up to a given term. And this happens at the cost of a couple of extra evaluations of F. So from this, you can see that the error on each step will go as some power of H, simply because we truncated the Taylor series at some point. And this is fine as long as H is small relative to the timescales of the problem, but will break down at large H. We can also see that X of T between Ti and Ti plus H is being approximated as a polynomial in H. And this is exactly what the problem is. Polynomials are not very good at representing oscillatory solutions. This polynomial approximation will be okay as long as H is less than about one wavelength of the oscillations that we're trying to represent, but will break down after that. And so this will cause the algorithm to take steps that are at most one wavelength long. Now, the smaller the steps are, the more steps the algorithm will need to take in the integration range. And so you can see that if the solution is highly oscillatory, then this will cause methods that use this polynomial approximation to struggle. So really, what is necessary is a better approximation for highly oscillatory solutions. There is an approximation frequently used in quantum mechanics called the wenzel kramers brillen approximation, or WKB for short. This is used to create analytic approximations for the solution of equations of this form. So the familiar harmonic oscillators with a time-dependent frequency. This WKB approximation is of this form. So a constant amplitude times an exponential in the exponent of which there is an infinite sum of terms. The first term is going to be proportional to the integral of the frequency. The second term with the frequency itself, the third term with the derivative of the frequency, and so on. And so the WKB approximation is a little bit like the Taylor expansion. But unlike the Taylor expansion, this is an asymptotic expansion, which means that the WKB approximation will reach its maximal accuracy at some finite number of terms in this exponent. So one cannot keep adding more terms and increase the accuracy indefinitely. And in fact, if the WKB approximation is being applied at the right place, then these successive terms in the exponent decrease up to a critical term, after which they start increasing again. And this uh, range of validity is when the frequency is slowly changing, or mathematically phrased, when omega dot om over omega is small. Another thing I must point out is that this expansion actually hides two independent solutions because of this plus or minus sign in the first term, but you would expect this from a second order differential equation. I would like to demonstrate this asymptotic property of the WKB approximation. So here I just plotted in black the solution of the error equation that we've seen. And in orange, I overplotted a WKB approximation of varying order and starting from a varying start time T naught. And in the second panel, I'm just plotting the difference between the two, so the residuals, because it becomes a bit difficult to see by eye. So at zeroth order, um, you can see that the WKD approximation is just a function of varying frequency but constant amplitude. And um, you can see this by looking at the first term, which is purely imaginary. So it will only affect the phase, uh, but not the amplitude of the expansion. The, first, the second term, however, um, is real, which means it will now allow for a time-dependent amplitude. And so now if I increase the order and add the second term, the approximation becomes drastically better. And this tr uh, trend continues. However, if I keep adding terms, at some point I will hit that critical term after which the terms start increasing and the accuracy starts decreasing. Let's now try applying this WKB approximation at a later time. 
So you may remember that the air equation has a frequency uh, which increases over time, but the rate of change of the frequency decreases over time. So the WKB expansion should become a better approximation at later times. At zeroth order, you can see that it's still the same um, varying frequency but constant amplitude. But as I add more terms, the residuals decrease drastically, and this continues even if I keep adding more terms uh, at order 3. So we now have an approximation to represent highly oscillatory functions, but we want to make this more similar to the runge cutter method, so embedded in a stepper mechanism. So let's say f plus and f minus are the two independent WKB solutions. Um, at each step, we will linearly combine uh, these two independent functions to match any set of initial conditions. These initial conditions are the solution and its derivative at time ti, and these will determine the coefficients a plus minus and b plus b minus. This way, we can reset the WKB approximation at each step, rather than applying a global approximation to the entire solution. And so now we have two methods, one valid when the solution changes slowly, and one valid when the solution oscillates rapidly. The combination of these two methods is the basis of Pius code. So Pius code steps along the numerical solution, like any initial value problem solver, starting from a set of initial conditions. At each step, it estimates the error on that step, which is an estimate of its local error, and it adapts its step size based on this error to keep it within the user-specified tolerance. It also uses this estimate of the local error to decide which approximation to use, runge kutta or WKB. And it will pick whichever allows for the larger step size to keep the error within the user specified tolerance. Pios code uses the same set of evaluations of the right hand side of the differential equation for both of the methods, so as to minimize the number of overall function evaluations and maximize efficiency. I won't go into a great amount of detail about how this local error estimate is made, but you can find the details in this 2020 paper um, that I'll list in the bibliography at the end of the talk. For now, the local error can be estimated in both the runge kutta and the WKB case, because both of these rely on expansions, as the difference between an nth order and an n minus one order step. But let's see Pius code in action. I'm going to use it to solve an equation of this form, um, where the frequency of this equation is parameterized by a parameter n, governing how many oscillations there are in the middle. The larger, n, the larger the n, the more oscillations there are. So I'm going to show you the natural steps that Pius code takes as it uh, traces the solution, color-coded by the method. And so what you should see is that at the beginning, uh, Pius code chose to take Rung cutter steps because the solution is slowly changing. But then in the middle, it changed to WKB steps, and thus it can step over several wavelengths at a time. And then at the end, in a fairly symmetric way, it switched back to Rung cutter. On the same slide, I wanted to visualize the problem with the conventional sol solvers, in this case, scipy.integrate.solve IVP. As you can see, for the same tolerance, it needs to take much smaller steps, resulting in more steps, and it even misses the analytic solution at the end. As n becomes large, uh, the previous type of plot becomes a bit difficult to see. And so on this plot, I wanted to show you the number of oscillations Pius code traverses in a single step for varying values of n. And just, this just shows that as n grows, it can traverse maybe a couple tens to a couple of hundreds, going up to almost 10,000 oscillations in a single step. And so it will need to make about that times fewer function evaluations. And so it will offer a reduction in computation time of about four orders of magnitude. So let's see how it does um, when solving the error equation that we've timed previously. Um, with scipy.integrate.solve IVP. 
So in the first cell, again, I'm just defining the differential equation. And in the second cell, Pius could solve the error equation um, in the same integration range. And it did so maybe about a thousand times faster. And it also got the solution right within the user specified tolerance, which was one in a thousand. And so now I'll consider some more physics based examples. It is thought that the large scale structure we can see today, so the galaxy clusters and the space in between, have been seeded as quantum fluctuations during a very early accelerated expanding phase of the universe called inflation. One can see these fluctuations today in the cosmic microwave background, which is this background radiation that we can detect from all directions. And it is a radiation that is not quite homogeneous and isotropic, and one can observe these patches within. So one way physicists can infer the physics of the early universe is by considering the statistical properties of the patches observed in the cosmic microwave background. For this, one needs to model the process of the emission of the cosmic microwave background, one of the first steps of which is the computation of a power spectrum of these quantum fluctuations. A power spectrum is a function of the amplitude squared of the fluctuations as a function of their Fourier wave number k. So to create a power spectrum, one needs to take a range of perturbations, each with a different wave number, and evolve the perturbations, and at the end of the integration range, read off this amplitude squared. And for a single power spectrum, this needs to be done a couple thousands of times. If embedded in a Bayesian inference framework, however, this forward modeling phase needs to be repeated hundreds of thousands of times for different parameters of the inflationary model. And for some inflationary models, the computation of the primordial power spectrum is the computational bottleneck in the forward modeling phase. Examples of such models include uh, models of closed universes, like those investigated uh, by Handley in 2019, some axiom monodromy models, and any model that requires the perturbations to be evolved for a long time. For example, models that set initial conditions for the perturbations at a very early time. I'm showing you some examples of primordial power spectra. Uh, this particular GIF is of um, primordial power spectra of closed universes of a varying initial curvature. The reason why Pyos code can be used to speed up this problem is because the evolution equation of each of these perturbations um, is given on the slide here, is of the form of a harmonic oscillator with a time-dependent frequency and the damping term. These terms are slowly varying, but the frequency being proportional to k over ah can get large in the models that I mentioned. Uh, what further complicates things is that the frequency and the damping terms are results of previous numerical computations, so these are not closed form functions, but rather a time series. But Pius code can actually deal with this, and the user can input a time series for each of these terms, and Pius code will just interpolate. In a simple inflationary model, the evolution of a single perturbation for a given wave number k may look something like this. So even in this case, you see that the perturbation undergoes rapid oscillations at the beginning, and so using Pyos code would give a speed up even in this simple case. However, for the models that I mentioned, the evolution of a single perturbation may look more like this. And so for these models, using Pyos code may become a necessity uh, in order for the forward modeling phase to take a tolerable amount of time. Our next example comes from quantum mechanics, which is where the WKB approximation was born. One of the most important equations in this field is the Schrodinger equation. And if one takes the time independent and one dimensional form of this, then it will become an oscillator with a time dependent frequency. In this equation, psi is the wave function, which represents the probability of finding a particle at position x. V of x is the potential well in which this particle is moving and E is the energy of the system. The wave function psi is subject to a number of boundary conditions. It has to vanish far outside the potential well, and it and its derivative have to be continuous. 
there are only specific values of the energy for which such a solution exists. And so it is of interest to find these values, which are called the energy eigenvalues, and the solutions, the energy eigenstates of the system. Even though this is a boundary value problem, it can be recast as two initial value problems such that Pius code can be applied. So in many cases, we can find the lower and upper bound for the energy of the nth eigenstate, En. If we then start from a random guess within those bounds, then we can assess how close this is to the actual solution. By starting two solutions for the wave function psi from outside the potential well where we know it has to vanish, and then propagating them to the middle of the potential well, and then assessing how continuous the solution is there. One can compute this quantity, and this quantity is zero, or will be close to zero, if the energy that we guessed is close to the energy eigenvalue. One can define a function that takes uh, as an input parameter this energy guess and outputs um, this quantity to be minimized and stick it into a root finding or a minimization algorithm. And so I'll try to do this in real time for a potential of the form um, x squared plus lambda x to the four. If this was only the quadratic term, then the system would be analytically solvable. But with this quartic perturbation, it becomes the quantum and harmonic oscillator for which there is no analytic solution. I'm going to attempt to find the energy eigenvalues for the energy levels um, corresponding to n equals 50, 100, 1000, and 10,000, with the lambda parameter being 1. One can solve the system with brute force and thus get estimates for the eigen energies. But let's see how Pius code does. So Pius code terminated successfully uh, and in a short amount of time, and it found energy eigenvalues that are very close to the numerical estimates. I'm plotting the first two solutions for the wave functions, not the higher ones because they're really highly oscillatory, but from this you can see that they are indeed continuous. There are several other examples uh, for the applications of Pius code. These papers all apply the WKB approximation by hand. And so the usage of Pius code could speed up the process or yield more accurate results. Uh, the first example uh, is modeling the traveling of sound waves in the part of the inner ear that maps sound waves of different frequencies onto unique positions on the basilar membrane. And it exploits the cylindrical symmetry of the inner ear to decompose the wave equation. The second one is tracing perturbations um, in black holes, um, which possess spherical symmetry. And the third one is, again, using the cylindrical symmetry of uh, meteor trains to compute the scattering amplitude of radio waves. Let me now introduce uh, Pius Code's Python interface. So this interface draws heavily from scipy.integrate. And for the minimal setup, all you need to do is define the differential equation, the integration range, and some initial conditions. In Pius code, definition of the differential equation happens through the definition of the frequency and the damping terms. Um, one can do this by defining them as functions or by defining them as time series if the functional form is not available. And so in here, I'm showing this latter example where Ts is an array of times, Ws and Gs are evaluations of the frequency and the damping terms respectively at those times. And then I'm defining the integration range and the initial conditions. And so you can see that once Pios code has run, it will return a dictionary. Um, the sole keyword stores the solution, dsol the derivative of the solution, t the time steps that Pios code has taken, at which the solution and the derivative are evaluated. Types stores the type of method that Pius could use for each step. And xavl is a placeholder for dense output, which I didn't ask for in this case. So here I'm just plotting the solution that I computed to again demonstrate that Pius code is capable of stepping over many oscillations in a single time step. It may be the case that you don't only want the solution at the end of the integration range. 
And so an advanced feature that Pios code has, like many initial value problem solvers, is dense output, which is the evaluation of the solution at user-specified points. This importantly happens with no significant computational overhead because there are no extra function evaluations made when the dense output is computed. And so it is easy to ask for a dense output. I just specified a keyword argument, t evil, to get a fairly continuous looking solution between two values. And in this continuous orange line, I'm just plotting dense output that Pios code computed. Pios code is open source. It will be soon submitted to the Journal of Open Source Software, and you can find it on GitHub and documentation on Read the Docs. On GitHub, you can also find examples for using the Python interface and also the C++ interface that I haven't talked about today. The development of Pios code is far from over. Uh, there are multiple ways uh, one could extend or improve it. The most immediate of which is the generalization to multiple dimensions. The WKB expansion is an inherently one-dimensional expansion, but there has been research done to replace the WKB expansion with a multidimensional one, the Magnus expansion, by Bamber and Handley in 2020. There is also more work currently underway um, to implement this multidimensional generalization. The alternative method to Runga Kata used by Pios code relies on the two independent solutions F plus and F minus, which in this case are the WKB solutions. But they can be any two functions that represent the solution. So for example, if the global behavior of your solution is known to be exhibiting sorted shaped um, oscillations, then a different choice of F plus and F minus replacing the WKB solutions may be the basis of a new method, especially tailored for your problem. And finally, an extension would be the ability to adjust the order of the WKB approximation that Pius code uses on the go in order to further reduce function evaluations and increase efficiency. And that would be all. So I will leave you with a quick cycle through my bibliography. And I am looking forward to your questions in the live uh, Q&A. Thank you very much.